Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. A'udhu billahi min shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Fatiullah, Tiya Rasul, Ulul Amri minkum. And a reminder for myself and abdukul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahal. And that Allah's rahmah and mercy keeping us in existence and forgiving our wrongs and granting us immense ni'mat to have the love for Sayyidina Muhammad And alhamdulillah in the month of Safar in which Allah orders for us to run to the cave. We pray that Allah expand our heart in the understanding of the cave and its reality of the Muhammadan heart. That in our life of struggling in the station of Mecca in which we accept Allah's oneness and the Kaaba symbolic of that reality of oneness that leave all other than the worship of Allah come to that oneness, struggle for that oneness and perchance Allah give that ni'mat of mulk in the physical world that when I find sincerity I may grant you faith. Faith is not the physical world anymore, the faith is the world of light, malakut. Iman is different than Islam and, and accepting. Islam is the world of form. You move the form, you accept with the form, all of those are related to form. Iman is the world of light and belief and faith. And that reality of moving towards Medina to Munawwara Allah gives to the example of the hijrah, the holy hijrah of Sayyidina Muhammad that you have to move but stop at the cave. Qahar al-Thawr, the cave of Thawr means that's the cave of all realities. That's the cave in which our arwa is located in that, dressed in that and the secret of guidance is based on that. So Ayatul Kareem from Surat al-Kahf Shahzad, it's ayah 17 but start from the middle of the ayah where it describes, مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَحْدِيَ اللَّهُ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ مَنْ يَحْدِيَ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُحْتَدِي وَمَنْ يُدْلِلْهُ فَلَنْ تَجِدَ لَهُ وَلِيًّا مُرْشِدًا صدق الله عليه وسلم وبركاته رسول الكريم from just this section when Allah in the above ayah is describing in that same ayah that they enter into the cave, the reality of the sun, the movement of the sleepers has to do with taslim, has to do that you, you taslim in this cave of realities. That we put a, a veil over their ears once you read this holy surah It'll describe that Allah put a veil over their ears and they went into a sleep. One, why the ears to cause this level of reality? Two, that when you enter into this cave of realities, the sun has a direct influence on you. Allah. And you don't move but through its isharat. And that's what Allah said, these are the signs, they were moving left and right like the command of the sun was giving it to move so they wouldn't burn and that their body wouldn't decay. But the spiritual reality is what we've been teaching is that this is the reality of the qamar, its path towards the sun, it's going through 12 veils, 12 buruj. Twelve tajallis of Allah it's different than the knowledges of the people of the earth. Their knowledge is like looking, this is a beautiful sky, these are beautiful stars. They talk of a reality 
The knowledge from the moon is in the reality, giving you description of the reality, it's on it versus stargazing towards it. At this level Allah is describing guidance because this is the cave of Sayyidina Muhammad This is the way of the people who want to enter into Medina to Munawwara, they want to enter into the highest reality that Allah wants to give. Maqam al-Mahmud is not for all of creation to believe. If they believe they granted paradise but to believe in Sayyidina Muhammad is Allah's highest gift. So then the symbolic path of Mecca to Medina that Prophet stepped into the cave, three days of work, what Allah did in those three days and did those three days ever end? The why three days Prophet into the cave? What type of reality Allah wanted to open in the cave and is continuously opening. The arwah and the soul of Prophet is there and doing the work that Allah wanted to do. And that's symbolic of the prophetic heart on our path that when Allah want to guide and this now we go into this, it says that these are from the signs of Allah He whom Allah guides is rightly guided. So if He's going to take them into the city of Medina to Munawwara, it's going to be based on these realities and these teachings. We're going to describe that now. But he whom he leaves astray means whom is not guided, is left astray. So this part here is very deep. If you're guided, you're guided. If Allah leaves you astray then He describes what is somebody who's astray? Never will he find him a waliun mushidun. Uh, guidance? When someone thinks they're guided then Allah clarifying because this whole Surat Al-Kahf is about haqqaiqs and the ways of tariqah, the way of the path, the way of the cave to the enter into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So like a clue, like a puzzle whom Allah said, whom guide is rightly guided but whom he left astray they never will find a wali on mushidun. If you're not with a wali and that wali is not a mushid and a guide, then you have to consider yourself according to Allah He left you to be astray. The same sentence is Allah's words, not my words. So guidance is what? It's not people thinking they're guided. Allah is clarifying, no, guidance is when Allah puts your hand in the hand of a guide. Sultanul Awliya Ma Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Sultanul Awliya Ma Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani, huge guides. All their heart and realities are dressing in, in these knowledges. So then Allah is saying, when we guide you, you're in the hands of Waliun Murshidun. When they say there is no murshid, Allah said, no it's in Qur'an there is murshid. There is no wali and there is no one who can protect you except Allah Allah says, you're wrong because I put it in Qur'an. That there are guides who are protectors with the izza and might of Allah's will. That it's through Allah's permission He's going to guide. So now then guidance happens how? That when Allah wants to guide you, the reality of Imam Ali Salam in the hijrah was what? He took the brunt of satanic attack because everything is, is symbolic. There's a physical event but there's a much deeper spiritual event. That Allah for the main character is one story but for me and you when we're coming on this path then this is a whole story of guidance until we get to the stories of Sayyidina Musa Salam and the adab of meeting the guide. But what Allah describing is, what is guidance? Because of their sacrifice and the steps they took, the brunt of this movement Imam Ali took 
most of the shaitans because he stood there in the bed to be killed. So the brunt of attack came to Imam Ali salam and it was stopped by the izzah and the might of Allah As a result of that Prophet went and established into the cave. So it means that in our life and in our guidance if that event had not taken place the minute you decided to come to tariqahs and come to the way of Allah shaitan would have obliterated you. He would have merely found that you want to go to tariqah he would have sent all his devils come rip you to pieces. But no, no there must be defenders, there must be waliyun mushidun. Allah when He destines this one will find the tariqah, Imam Ali is dispatched to destroy the shaitans that are around him. No shaitan is going to come to that one whom Allah want to be guided. Because Allah is saying, if I didn't grant that sultan to come and guide you and to protect you, you'll be left astray by the devils that are playing with you. So the fact that Imam Ali lies within the bed of this reality of, of hijrah, the reality of Naqshbandiya is the bulk of the attack is then taken by Imam Ali to destroy those shaitans so that you can reach to the cave and to the heart and to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Otherwise the minute you intended to do something good intended to have a love for Prophet this dunya in its overwhelming negativity would have obliterated you. So when people say, no this is no protection but this is Allah's protection. This is how Allah does it. Allah doesn't send His physical hand and put something. This the people have an incorrect understanding. Allah works by means, says, these souls that I granted immense blessings, I merely dispatch them. So that waliyul murshid and one reality of Imam Ali salam is that his ruhaniyat, his nazar must come to defend you, push away all negativities so that you are free to go to Medina. He did it for Prophet he said, I'll lie in the bed, they're coming to kill you, I will lie in the bed and take that death. I sacrifice myself for you. This is an eternal station for the believer. If he doesn't lay his li life down to defend us, to protect us, shaitan would have destroyed us. He clears the path, you are free to move towards Medina to Munawwara. And these ashiqeen they begin to run and levitate and move through means of dreams, through visions, through whatever comes to their heart by randomly hitting a YouTube. There's no randomly hitting a channel. It's by that reality they cleared the way and they pushed you press that button. You press the button now you're entering towards the Medina Madani realities. These are ashiqeen, anytime you touch their button, watch the video, come across their page, come across a book, anything Allah has opened a path to Medina. It's not that you, you had $18,000 to go physically take a plane, many people don't and they won't have a ability especially now anymore, everything's closed. But Medina is everywhere. Anywhere the lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad gather, it's the garden of Medina, of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So then the first level of guidance, you must have been defended to come this direction. Then we go into the heart. At the heart they describe the spider web and how Allah works with codes because if you've ever seen a treasure map it doesn't show you the map and put an X and say there's 10 million dollars of gold here. There's clues and Allah wants the seeker to seek, it's not given to you where how come it's, how come it's not uh, known, why is this a secret? Because secret is a part of seeking. You seek <laughs> to find a secret so that it has value. 
If it's up in the open, it has no value. So when they come across the cave, Allah draws their attention to a spider web. Why the importance of a spider web? So Ahlul Tafakkur they understood the Ankabut, the reality and the beauty of Ankabut at many levels the tariqah, you must live a life like a spider, not a bear hunting for your sustenance, trying to conquer the whole earth, but make a beautiful house and let Allah send flies to you. He can send big flies too. If your house is good it'll catch it. That was one level. Ahl tafakkur they understood deeper that this Ankabut is Surah 29. What's the huruf of 29? Lam alif. Oh, the whole way is based on Basirat al Lam Jalala. We said this whole treasure wanting to be known is by Lam alif. Later you read in the same holy surah that Sayyidina Musa wanted the Lam alif. I want where the two rivers meet. Where La ilaha illallah meets with Muhammadun Rasulullah and this Bahr Hayat in the center where the fish comes to life, this is what I want Ya Rabbi. So they understood the spider web is a secret of the sword and whose sword? Means the Zulfiqar and these are now the Ulul Bab. The Ulul Bab they guard the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad that's why many will turn on the signal, watch the TV and say, oh these people are crazy and change the channel. Oh, because you didn't see anything and that wasn't meant for you. And they came after they were stalled from the attack, they came running, running, running and say, oh there's nothing here, it's just a spider web. Those Sufiani, same, same people. They don't see the importance of Sayyidina Muhammad and they definitely don't recognize the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad At that heart there are the caretakers and they guard the door to that reality. And they guard the door with the secret of Lam Alif. And inside the cave now becomes the understanding of our journey. That inside the cave means inside my heart I'm in a state of fana but in my heart is a Siddiq, means in my heart is a Siddiq. And if you're trying to enter into this heart of Sayyidina Muhammad you're going to need help because our heart begins to mimic that reality. It says, in my heart is a Siddiq and the role that I have given to this Siddiq is to put his qadam, his holy foot, his path, his reality. His power in which Allah has given to his qadam, we'll describe that in Surat Al Fat in 48, Surah 48. Ta qaddam bin There has to be a foot on this path to support you. The great Siddiq, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, is showing that my foot went into that hole for shaitan and blocked the shaitan and Prophet's description. When he yelled at the snake, how dare you bite the foot of a Siddiq, it's forbidden for you shaitan. And shaitan's response was, I, I, I love you so much I just wanted to see you. Shaitan's response is, I just I wanted a beautiful vision of your, your gaze. Now what does that tell you? That one, if you want to battle against shaitan you better have a Siddiq in your heart. Because if you think you're going to fight shaitan alone, you will be obliterated. That's why this is all about guidance when Allah says, if you don't understand this you're definitely astray. Shaitan is playing with you and flipping you in all sorts of directions. In the holy heart and the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad is describing Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, this is his role. That his madad and support must be with you. Putting his qadam, putting his path, putting his training, putting his teaching and then sending fires and madad to you to block the shaitan and lessen the attack of shaitan within your heart. And that shaitan that is coming, what's his character? 
He loves Sayyidina Muhammad So means this shaitan is coming under their permission. That's what we said before when guidance comes, the shaitans that deal with you is under the permission of these awliya. He's a shaitan, he's going to flip your world upside down but he's under. That's why Allah described that his, his permission is bi izzatullah, it's in Qur'an, bi izzat al-rasul wa izzat al-mu'mineen shaitan is allowed to operate. Where? In the sanctified fields of guidance and murshid. If Allah didn't give a control every type of shaitan would be coming from all directions hitting all the students. Be a thousand wolves on your five sheep, there'll be no way. So Allah describing, no, no, when I destined for you guidance first thing I dispatch Imam Ali Salam, he obliterate all the devils around. The only one who's allowed in, he's okay, don't worry about him, he's under their command. He's just gonna play around a little bit to test you but not to devour you and take you away. Because the reality of the heart, he came and said, I just want to see your beautiful face. You saw my face? Die and he threw him out. But shaitan doesn't die so he comes back to life again. Means these are the realities of the, the heart of guidance. So our heart becomes then a duplicate of that reality. That when we're trying to reach the Muhammadan love and trying to have Prophet's love come into our heart. And Allah is, is reminding for us, shaitan will be coming all the time to attack you. If I'm going to guide you, I'm going to guide you with these murshids. That's why they teach you to make your awrad, make the madad, call upon their reality. Because when you call upon them, their arwah and their being begin to enter into your soul, enter into your heart and do the work that Allah wants them to do. And that's the reality of guidance. If people think they're fighting it themselves, they have really underestimated what type of power shaitan has. And they under, undervalued the ni'mat of Allah You think you're taking your desire away from your, by yourself or it's from the budala and nujaba and nuqaba. The nuqaba when you call upon the madad of the shajara of the shaykhs, you don't know which category these shaykhs are. The nuqaba have an ijazah and a permission from Allah Their arwah can enter into your soul, they can see your heart from a distance and begin to clean it and pray upon it. There's no way for you to take these desires out if not by izzat of Allah And izzat of Allah comes through the guidance of the souls and the gift that He's already given to these souls. But it requires somebody to be humble. When they say, no, no this is shirk, what are you talking about shirk? It's not about worshipness, worshipness is only for Allah But the kingdom of Allah is filled with bounty. If you think the angels are doing something, what about this, the souls of awliya who are much higher than the angels? وَلَكَرْ كَرَامْنَ بَنِي Adam. The soul of, of, of pious souls, their darajat and their love by Allah is higher than malaika. And everybody believes malaika do everything. They bring this, they bring that, they bring this, but is that of Allah So same for the arwah of these awliyaullah, that when you make the madad they're teaching because the, the cave is such an immense reality that you can spend years meditating on it and all its realities will begin to flow. This is just a drop of that reality. That when you're entering in when they say that that cave you never left means that as soon as your arwa is from that reality from an ancient time that your heart is now a part of that cave and your heart becomes a symbol like that cave. So your heart becomes a cave because who do you have in your heart? Sayyidina Muhammad and why is he resting and not busy? Because he's coming with his ishq and his fana, and he's saying, I'm going to bring my Khalil, I'm going to bring my Siddiqs. My one Siddiq, he's going to fight everything around you to guard you. And my other beloved Siddiq, he's going to enter in 
and go after that whole where shaitan is coming. Because when I'm in your heart and my love is in your heart, me and shaitan we don't get along. We're not going to share your heart. And Allah said, I created no one with two hearts. So then how do you fight shaitan? Is bring the love of Prophet The ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad is the opening of all these realities. Your heart becomes the cave, the cave of this immense love. And every time you make a salawat, we described before you can't even put it on the camera that what is a salawat? The whole ocean of power is salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad The whole ocean of power, its vibration, its energy is on durood sharif. When you make one durood sharif as if you took a drop from this ocean of immense power and brought it into your being. That it can't be understood, it can't even be described by the tongue and there's no even permission to talk about that reality. But immense, immense, imagine then this love is entering your heart, Prophet is coming, he's not coming alone. He's coming with all jundum in as sama, he's coming with the entire armies of heaven. If I'm going to occupy your heart, I'm not going to sit there and fight with shaitan. My sahabi will do that. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siti comes immediately put his qadam into that hole and begin to push into your heart that give your whole life away for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad You're not going to do anything with it and that's what we told you last night. It's not about emptying your bank account to the shaykh but empty your heart of everything other than La ilaha Muhammadun Rasulullah Look to your heart and meditate. As soon as you meditate, do you think of your bank account? Then your, your heart is in the wrong place. Do you think about your email? Do you think about sandwich? Do you think about dinner? Whatever we think about is the reflection of what's existing in our heart. And that's what Allah is saying, clean that, clean those things so that your heart enters into a state of nothing. Once it's nothing it begins to enter into a state of love and muhabbat. When they look into their heart they're back in Medina and they're crying to Prophet And they just want to be in that presence and that is the heart of the cave, that is the heart of the reality, that is the heart in which Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq is fighting aggressively. That take these desires out. Make yourself to be truthful with your deeds and with your words and with your actions. I'll make you into a man who's truthful. You're just a lying child right now. If that soul is not there in your heart, do you think you can ever reach to truthfulness with the overwhelming dirtiness of dunya? It must be madad and support. And that's what makes us to be humble, that it's not us doing anything. Surrender yourself to say, I'm nothing, Ya Rabbi I'm nothing without your help. Send your rijalullah, send those whom you bestowed your blessings and bestowed your grace upon them. Their light and their arwa comes begin to extinguish all the bad and that imam on the outside destroying every type of shaitan that trying to block you. And as soon as that light wants to open into your heart, they open for you Medina to Munawwara. They open for your heart the city of lights, means the city of ishq and love of Sayyidina Muhammad And who do you meet there? Imam Ali is in Medina to Munawwara. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq is in Medina to Munawwara. And they are perfecting your outside and inside. Until Allah describes in Surah Al-Kahf they become rushed. You're ripe when you have bad character, you become rushed, you become grown and ripened, beautified by the sun. The sun ripens and sun. The love of Sayyidina Muhammad makes them to be rushed, ripened and sweet. 
At that point when they're inside that reality, entered into that ra reality, Allah describes then these servants have been granted a victory. Then what's Allah's victory? Surah 48. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina Liyaghfiraqallahu ma taqaddama min zambika wa ma ta'akhar Wa itimma ni'matahu alayka wa yahdiyaka siratam mustaqeema Wa yansuraka Allahu nasran azeeza Sadaqallahu al-azeem wa barakta Rasulul Kareem Allah then describe in Holy Qur'an Surah Al-Fat 48th Surah, Indeed we granted you O Sayyidina Muhammad because now your heart is a Muhammadan heart, a clear opening and victory. That may Allah forgive all your sins of the past and those to follow. Means Allah will wash away, yaghfirakullahu ma taqaddam, the qadam means your foot will wash away all the sins of your path and your foot from the past and all the way to your, your qiyamah. That will wash everything, will wash all your past because if, if we're going to grant you a victory, Allah describing the victory, this is not something small. To enter into that cave, to be granted from the reality of that cave, Allah then describing, we're going to wash away all the sins of your past and everything that's going to follow. And that's why then you become mahfuz. Why awliyaullah they're, they're not masoom that they don't sin, no they actually sin but they're mahfuz because Allah's continuously cleaning, 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 cleaning. Because this was the promise of the cave. That's why on our taweez of Ashab al Kaf, this Ayatul Kareem is on the taweez. Surah Al Fat is on the taweez that we have of, of Ashab al Kaf, that we added it on that taweez. And He will fulfill His favors upon you and guide us to the straight path. Taqaddam. He'll complete his ni'mat wa yahdika siratul mustaqeema. What is Sayyidina Muhammad one of his 201 names? Siratul Sayyidina Siratul Mustaqeem. Because now that Muhammadan heart is being dressed. So Allah is saying, I'm going to complete all my ni'mat, whatever I promised you from the day of promises, I'm going to begin to dress you with it. And that your qadam and your feet is on the feet of Sayyidina Muhammad and that you are on Siratul Mustaqeem. And then how Allah then describes who you are? Wa yansurukullahu nasran aziza. So then you're somebody whom Allah describes, yansurukullahu nasran aziza. That's why Allah says, if you come against my only Allah, I'm going to make a war against you. Why? Because they're dressed with Yansurukullahu Nasran Aziza. That Allah said, I'm going to support you. After I described everything I'm going to give to you, I'm going to support you with my Sifat al Aziz. That I will obliterate anyone who comes after you. And anything I want to grant you, if the whole world comes to stop it, it's going to reach to you. So means to be dressed by Yansurukullahu Nasran Aziza. This is the reality of what Allah is describing. This is guidance. Not that you think you became clever and you think you went yourself somewhere and you guided yourself and you found your own cave somewhere in a closet and sat in it. No, these guides have to take our hands and take us on this journey. And their journey is into the Holy Qur'an, not the reading of it but the living of it. Because the Qur'an is dressing them, blessing them, putting on onto their soul. Every ayat of kareem is coming and dressing their soul so that they become dressed from Holy Qur'an. That they went to the cave, they got dressed by the cave, they understood the madad of calling upon the Siddiqs. 
and they understood the reality of Imam Ali Salam and they understood how much of the devils were destroyed for them to reach this immense blessings. That's why we say on Jummah, on this day I reached immense blessings because they understood you could have not got up on that Jummah if Allah wasn't guiding you. Do you think you prayed because it was your cleverness? Or in the azan you say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyul azim. Allah's help and power is allowing us to pray. So, means then there are darajats of guidance. Just to be able to pray is God's gift, Allah's gift. And every movement higher is Allah's ni'mat and blessings. And that's why by Jummah they're thinking, Allah that, oh my God, how what an amazing day this is. I actually reached to Friday. And all of it is from Allah's blessings. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with the realities of guidance and the secret of the cave and the secret of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basiri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.